Statistical tolerancing requires due diligence of the system before proceeding to calculation. First, are the dimensions independent or are they dependent? Second, do we have a linear stack up or a nonlinear stack up? In this lesson, we will investigate independent linear tolerance stack ups. Statistical tolerancing begins with our understanding of the normal distribution and the central limit theorem. Each dimension will have a mean and standard deviation. When compared to a target value with a corresponding tolerance range, we can calculate a normal probability that represents the likelihood of a defect. Under the statistical tolerancing approach, we add or subtract dimensions based on mean and standard deviation. Recognize that these formulas assume that the part dimensions are independent. This means that the influence of one measure has no influence over any other measure. Adding and subtracting means is straightforward. Since we take the square of the standard deviation to find the variance, we add variances for both addition and subtraction. Recall that we must handle dispersion in terms of variance because standard deviation is not an unbiased estimator. Root sum square is found by taking the square root of the sum of the variance of each dimension. Recognize that process variation increases over time. For this reason, we need to expect a 1.5 sigma shift in the process. This means that variation long term will be larger than variation short term. This is due to a number of reasons, such as wear in, drift in processing, and human sources of variation. In Six Sigma, our short-term goal is Z of 6.0. This is 3.4 parts per million defects. When accounting for the 1.5 Sigma shift, this is a long-term Sigma of 4.5. However, we must use a factor of 6.15 times the upper and lower spec limit. Recall that PPM is based on a cumulative area to the right of Z. In tolerance analysis, there is an upper and lower spec limit. Under these conditions, at 4.5 sigma, this would be 6.8 parts per million, or 3.4 parts per million in each tail. If we adjust to 4.65 sigma, this gives us 1.66 parts per million per tail, and a total of 3.32 parts per million. While this is slightly more conservative, 4.64 sigma gives a total PPM in excess of 3.4. When we adjust for the 1.5 sigma shift, we get 6.15. Let's consider this example. Part A and Part B come from different suppliers. They are independent. First, we find the average and standard deviation of the stacked parts. Now we can find the sigma tolerance limits to be 4.309 plus or minus 0 0.071709. Note that we used a factor of 6.15 as previously discussed. Suppose the two parts from example one have to fit in a space that has a mean of 4.35 and a standard deviation of 0 0.015. We first find the average clearance by subtracting the means. If the clearance is less than zero, we have an interference. We find an average clearance of 0 0.041. The standard deviation of the clearance is found to be 0 0.019. Using the average and standard deviation for the gap, we find that the likelihood of an interference to the left of the Z value under the normal distribution. The likelihood is 